Good evening. Welcome, church family. Uh, glad to welcome you all for Good Friday. We're going to go ahead and get started with our special service this evening and sing the same love. choose the humble and raise them high you choose the weak and make them strong you choose the brokenness inside and give us life same love that set the captives free same love that opened eyes to see is calling us all by name you are calling God that spread the heavens wide, the same God that was crucified is calling us all by name. You are calling us all by name. You take the faithless one aside and speak the words you are mine. You call the cynic and the proud. Set the captives free. Same love that opened eyes to see is calling us all by name. You are calling us all by name. Same God that spread the heavens wide. The same God that was crucified is calling us all by name. You are calling us all. Chosen one 
Bring many songs to glory Good evening. We are so happy that you are here tonight and that we can be together in person. I feel like I keep saying it, but I just can't help myself because of, as every anniversary comes of a time we weren't gathered together, it just reminds you we'll never take it for granted um, to be gathered you know, in person. So we are glad you're here. Um, we're happy to be spending uh, this Good Friday together. And I am just was reminded today um, as my girls began to grow up a little bit and, and start to really understand the story of Easter, they were um, struggling to understand why Good Friday could possibly be called good. Um, don't we, do we understand you correctly? That that's the day Jesus was arrested, and that's the day that they put him on the cross, Mama. And, um, you know, really having to step back and explain that, yes, you're right, but it is also the day demonstrated of good love and perfect love and Jesus making a choice to um, die on the cross for not just me and not just the two of you, but for every single person that he created and loves and cares about and is extending an invitation to even now. So as we gather tonight, uh, it is indeed a Good Friday and we are just so thankful that you are here with us. Um, I'm going to be reading tonight from Romans 5 verses 6 through 10. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. 
But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Would you pray with me? Father, we gather tonight um, so grateful and thankful to the point of feeling overwhelmed, Father, that you loved us enough to create a plan that would include sending your one and only son to sacrifice his life for each and every one of us. Father, I pray that as we continue tonight to um, worship and honor you, Father, that you would just Meet us where we are and continue to call us closer to you, Father. We thank you that the one who created all things, the one that created us, God, that you would also call us by name. Lord Jesus, we love you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Do you ever hear that sound? Do you know what I mean? That sound ever ever so often when when you're not thinking about it. Shh, listen. Well, well, I don't hear it now, but it kind of sounds like a clanking, kind of like a kind of, yeah, that's it. Did did you hear that? The first time, I I didn't know what it was. I, I just thought it was part of the noise that makes up my everyday life. It was faint and sometimes barely audible. Sometimes people don't even hear it at all. The first time I heard it, I was driving. That day, for some reason, I didn't turn on my car radio, so it was just my thoughts and me alone in a quiet car. I remember I was driving, oh, about 45 miles an hour, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this guy just pulls right out in front of me and and then just slows down to 10 miles an hour. Well, I put on, I slammed on my brake, and I did like, what in the, and before I could get out the next word out of my mouth, I thought it, and then I heard, and then the next time I heard it, I went to Walmart, you know how that is, I went to pick up just a few things, and ended up with a cart load full of stuff, and imagine my surprise when the clerk forgot to bring up a whole carton of Coke that was at the bottom of the cart. Well, I knew she had missed it. Uh, she just handed me my receipt and told me have a good day. And that was it. Well, I thought about saying something. I knew she had left there, but I didn't. So I left. And when I crossed the threshold of the door, And then there was that time I went to go see a Christian movie at the theater. I paid for my ticket and went into the lobby. And when I got in there, I noticed another theater had another movie that everybody was talking about. It was R-rated, and it did have some bad language. But I was curious, and I really wanted to see it. I was by myself, and who's going to know? And then there was those times at work when I got on the computer and looked at my personal emails and looked up Facebook and all those things you do instead of working. And then there was those times I dismissed my kids when they wanted to talk. And then there was that time I raised my voice in anger. And then I started, every time I did something that I shouldn't, I'd hear that sound, that, that ever-present sound. I, it, all of a sudden, I started hearing it daily. And then I heard it multiple times a day. It happened every day without fail. Well, I went to a, an Easter service one year, about two years ago, and the church was doing a reenactment of Good Friday along with their passion play. There was an actor there that was portraying Jesus. They had placed he was bloody and torn 
and he was laying on a cross. A Roman soldier grabbed a heavy iron hammer and a huge spike, and he placed it in Jesus' hand, and he and then he drew back that hammer again, and he went, and I realized that was the sound that I was hearing. Every time that I sinned, every time that I had an impure thought, every time I turned my back on God, I realized that night, it wasn't the Roman soldier that placed Jesus on that cross. It wasn't the Jews. It wasn't Pilate. It wasn't even Satan. I did it. I planted each one of those spikes into his hand myself. I did it. He died for me. Do you ever hear that sound? It's faint. Do you ever hear that sound when you're not thinking about it every once in a while?
on you as a uh, new church family uh, for me. Uh, you know, sometimes behind <laughs> the masks that we wear, so to speak, um, you know, there's there's real things. And we all have our, we all have our burdens. We all have our brokenness, including your pastor. And I think sometimes it's easy for us to um, to become spectators in worship services and forget that really we're participants to open up our lives, uh, our hearts to our Savior. And so this is a part of the service that I hope you would really be reminded that we're all participants all the time. But what we, what we have up here today is uh, just uh, some little... Uh, spikes and they're to serve tonight as reminders to each and every one of us that we we all have burdens that we need to lay at the cross and by burdens I mean those things that seem to separate us from our ourselves and our brokenness and the holiness and and the freedom and the glory of God and so what we're asking you to do tonight as participants is uh, if, if you're, uh, I, w- I was going to say comfortable, um, uh, even if you're not completely comfortable, we still want you to come. But if, if it's really not you, that's fine. Um, but we want you to come and take one of these little spikes and take a minute to reflect on either the personal burdens or sin you know when Jesus died on the cross he he died not only for the sins that we would bear that we need him to bear so that we can be right with the father but he he died for the sins of others that have caused us hurt and brokenness that keeps us separated from God because of the hurt and so there might be a lot of different things you would write on this uh, if you if you can and want to. Uh, and we ask that you would symbolically place that on this little spike, those things that have separated you from the love and the, the healing and the grace of God. And, and just take take your, your spike over here and there's a, a basket down here uh, that you can you can drop uh, yours into. And then we're going to have some deacons placed around, uh, I think, over here. uh, And they're going to be holding containers with the bread and the cup. And we'll all eat the bread and the cup together. So just hold on to it for a while. But we ask that you would uh, come get a spike. Also, we have some Sharpies up here uh, in these uh, cans. And you can even write a word or something that has separated you from God that you can leave at the foot of the cross tonight. And then symbolically, you place this there, knowing that Jesus died for all of those things that would separate us from God. Then go and take your container uh, with the bread and the cup of the Lord's supper table and remember that, that he has come to you and as you receive him, he not only takes away our sin, but he clothes us in his presence and in his righteousness before God for all eternity. So we're asking you to do that tonight um, and come. And and even if you don't come and and get one of the spikes and symbolically drop it here, we ask that you would still, if if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, to still go and and grab uh, the elements of the Lord's table as the deacons have them. So please feel free uh, to come at this time as you would like.
One of the things that I forgot to tell you is that if you have a hard time maneuvering the containers with the Lord's Supper uh, bread and cup, uh, James up by the table has uh, some containers that are already open and we invite you to go to him. I'll cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flow be of sin the double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure. Not the labor of my hand can fulfill Close 
Well, we, we meet tonight to basically remember uh, one, one day in, in the history of our world. And that was the day that Jesus died on the cross. And I was thinking about that and I was thinking about how there's hundreds of thousands, even millions of people around our world today uh, that are gathering, you know, little flocks that are gathering just like this to remember that one day out of all the days in the history of the world. And then I got to thinking about my days and my days are pretty routine, it seems like. But every once in a while, you'll come up on a day that, that has a um, special significance. And um, I wanna share one of those days with you for me. And it, it was the last day that I spent with one of my best friends. For a matter of fact, he was the best man in my wedding. Uh, the last day that I spent with Carrie. And Carrie, uh, at age 25, he had, he had gotten cancer. And uh, he, he died at 25. And I still remember that last day with Carrie. And I remember we went fishing. And he was doing some chemo, so he, he wasn't real strong at the time. But uh, we had gone fishing together, and we had laughed so hard together. And we reminisced about so many things. And we shared our hearts. And we shared about our faith in Jesus Christ. And Carrie had wandered. We both wandered in our teenage years. But he wandered quite far further than me and... Um, but it was just such a beautiful day as we just reaffirmed our faith together. And um, I wonder if that, those are the kind of memories that the, the first 12 disciples would have, you know, or 11 of them would have walked away with from, you know, from, from that day. Um, and I want to look at it from the perspective a little bit of one of those uh, disciples, John. And John... Um, you know, he was one of the sons of Zebedee, James and John. He was one of Jesus' inner three, Peter, James, and John. Uh, he was the one that was known as the one who Jesus loved. He was the one who is said to have leaned over on Jesus at the first Lord's Supper or at that Passover meal time. And um, so... Uh, I wonder what that day would have been like for him. And let me just reminisce with you for a minute. First, there was the Passover meal. And of course, the Passover meal for the Jews is when they, they celebrated um, that God had sent Moses uh, to, to, to bring the people out of Egyptian slavery. And of course, they celebrated that, remembering that the, the night before Pharaoh said, under Moses' leadership, uh, it'll send the people away and how they, they went in haste and that's why their, their bread never raised with the yeast in it. And so they always ate unleavened bread at that time. But, um, you know, they, they, they remembered the time when, when the, God told the people that a death angel was gonna come to every household in Egypt and the firstborn of every family uh, was gonna be killed. And yet the people trusting in God that he said, if, if you would instead bring an unblemished lamb and sacrifice that lamb, you could take the blood of that substitutionary lamb and put it on your doorpost and the death angel will pass over your house. And so they remembered that. Um, and Jesus was eating that meal. And, and, and part of the movement of the Passover meal 
uh, if you've ever participated in one. Part of it is the things that you eat, but it's also four specific cups of wine. And um, e- each of those cups of wine re- are, are remembrances of promises of God that come from Exodus chapter 6, verse 6 and 7. And let me just read that to you. Um, it says, uh, Therefore, say to the Israelites, I am the Lord, and I will... Here's promise number one. I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. Promise number two. I will free you from being slaves to them. Promise number three. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. And then number four. I will take you as my own people and I will be your God. And so there's four promises I will bring you out of Egypt. I will set you free, deliver you from being slaves. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with many acts of judgment. And I will take you as my own people. And so they remembered those promises as they would drink the wine. Now, it's my understanding that between the second cup of wine And that third cup is when they would eat the Passover meal. Now, I I want you to look at this, uh, a a verse from Luke chapter 20. um, uh, Verse, uh, yeah, Luke 22, 20. And likewise, the cup, now, now Jesus took the bread and then he took the cup. After they had eaten, you see, it was after the meal, uh, and, uh, this cup is, is the cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood, Jesus said. And, and so if you think about it, if they, they ate the meal, it would have been right after the second cup and, and it would have been the third, and, and then they eat the meal. And so this would have been the third cup that Jesus was talking about. And which cup was that? That was the cup of promise, of redemption with an outstretched arm and, and with many acts of judgment. And, and that's a new covenant. A new, a new relationship that's now possible with God through that redemption of Jesus saying, basically, I'm the ultimate sacrificial lamb. And I'm the one that has come to redeem you, to buy you back to a right relationship with God. And, and he comes to redeem us with outstretched hands and many acts of judgment as he bears the judgment of sin from a holy God on himself as a substitute in our place. And so Jesus was showing that he was the ultimate fulfillment of God's redemption to a sinful world that we might forever be set free from that sin, forever bought back in to the family of God So that was part of what they did. Uh, Another thing they did, the scripture says they went out to the Mount of Olives and and there Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane and he prayed and he told the disciples to pray and watch with them because they needed it so much to stay focused, but they kept falling asleep. And then Jesus prayed one prayer over three different times. And, And we have it here recorded in Mark chapter 14, verse 36, where Jesus said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me yet not what I will but what you will you know it's like Jesus saying remove this cup this cup of redemption this cup that represents my outstretched arm my taking on the judgment of the sin of the world but not my will Jesus said but your will be done finally there was all the anxiety as there was this crowd that was coming up the hill in the dark And of course, they had a hard time identifying Jesus and Judas identified him with a kiss. And and, and then Jesus is taken off to trial and and Peter goes to the courtyard as they've all ran away by now, all the disciples. And and Peter goes to the courtyard and that's where he denies Jesus three different times. And then Judas goes out and he's so remorseful for having betrayed Jesus. He goes out and he hangs himself and then Jesus uh, uh, gets uh, uh, beaten and he gets scourged, uh, which is whipped by the Roman government with a hideous cat of nine tails with a seven-corded whip. And they would beat him over and again, oftentimes tearing flesh. And, 
and just bruising the body. And, and the disciples, they're all scattered and you, you got Jesus being crucified. And there's women disciples looking on. And then we get these words about John. It says in John 19, 25, but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. And then he said to his disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. And so John was the only of those 11 disciples that is recorded as having been right there at the cross. The others had ran away and he had been scared and ran away, but it's like he must have come back. And I was thinking about John. It probably wasn't difficult for him to lean on Jesus at the table, but I think it took a lot of courage for him to stand with Jesus at the cross. And so much had been experienced that day. I wonder if it ever occurred to him while he was, after, after he had eaten the bread and, and drank the cup with Jesus, I wonder if it ever occurred to him, not only am I expressing in a participatory way, not a spectator way, but a participatory way, and eating this bread and drinking the cup, not only am I confessing that I believe in Jesus and that he's the ultimate sacrifice for sin. He's the one with the outstretched arms. You know, Not only am I trusting in him that he is all that the, the sacrificial lamb of God is to be for the entire world, the ultimate unblemished sacrificial lamb. But as I eat that bread and I drink that cup, I'm reminded that not only did he give his life for me, but now that he's mine and I'm his and I'm willing to not only lean on him at a table, but I'm willing to stand with him no matter what, even at a cross. And I'm willing to keep listening to his commands to me. And, and whatever he tells me, I'll do. And it said, Jesus, the first thing he told John was, you take care of this lady, my mother. She's your mother now. And it says he went out of there and he brought her into his own home. And so when we come to eat the bread and drink the cup today, we remember him. We remember how he is the one with the outstretched arms, the one who gave his life, took the judgment of sin that we could be welcomed into the family of God free of charge because the price has already been paid but we remember also not only is he ours but in eating the bread and drinking the cup we're his and that we will not only lean on him as we eat the bread and drink the cup and thank him but we'll stand with him no matter what that means we'll stand with him because he's our Lord and we'll listen to his word and we'll do what he says one day in the life of a disciple. Let's pray. God, we thank you today for your ultimate sacrifice for us. But we realize unless we die, we'll never live. So may we die to ourselves that you as the risen Savior would live in us. I pray this in Christ's name. Amen. You'd send upon me like a rolling stone, like black swan raging on the roll that I know. You know it unnerves me when I lose. Now
out of my head Then I build my life around Someone who I thought that I was But it turns out All the things I do to feel young They only make me old You raise me like a baby Like a fiery phoenix bird You lift me up like Lazarus You love me like death like a vein of gold with the powers that drive up the flowers from the fold you cast me uncursed unearth my body and my soul like fire from my ashes like fire from my coals and i build my life around someone who i thought that i was but it turns out all the things i do to feel young they only make me old but you raise me like a baby like a fiery phoenix bird and you lift me up like lazarus you love in my life searching for a place I could thrive but it turns out all the things I do to survive they only make me old you raise me like a baby like a fiery phoenix bird at the Lord's Supper table. You know, it's like we're in that Passover meal. You know, that Pastor Jim just described. That Passover meal with Jesus, the last supper, the first supper for believers. And he took the bread and he took the cup and he had been explaining to the disciples on that very night, before he had gotten to that part, he had, he had shared with them a new commandment to love one another. And he had modeled for them to serve one another. And then on that night, he did share that meal with them. And some of the disciples, you know, one of them was gonna doubt him. Thomas. One was going to deny him. Peter. One was going to betray him. Judas. Two were probably still wondering who is going to be the greatest in your kingdom. James and John. have this chance tonight to place ourselves in that setting and at that supper as if it were happening right now and to consider who 
we are in that scene. Who are you? We do the Lord's Supper, and you'll recall when we do it that it's a remembrance. Remembrance of Jesus. To know that he came from heaven to earth because he loves us. And while he was on earth, he ministered and cared and proclaimed and pointed people to himself, to God, to forgiveness, mercy, and grace. That's what Jesus did. And then he delivered good on it. We will remember him. When I remember him, though, I see a reflection back. He is mine. He is my God. He is my Savior. He is my Lord. Oh, I do want to stand with him, Pastor Jim. I do want to stand with him completely. But I see this reflection back of who am I to him? A doubter? A betrayer? A denier? A selfish one? Seeking self-glory? Who am I to him? I'm a child of the Most High God, and so are you if he is yours. You are his. Before we take the meal tonight, have all been served. So on the occasion of that last supper, the first supper, for believers. He took the bread and he gave thanks. Thank you, Lord. And then he gave it to the disciples and he said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In a similar way, oh, I'll give a moment. I cheated. Does anybody need assistance? I've got one open. In a similar way, after he had given them the bread and given thanks, this is my body given for you. He took the cup. And he gave thanks. And so, Lord, we give thanks. And he said, This cup is my blood, the cup of the new covenant given for you. Oh Lord our God, we are so thankful for this occasion to remember. Remember you are ours and we are yours children of the Most High God, loved so much even with a sacrifice on that cross. We do remember you, our Savior. Amen. Shall we rise for a closing song together?
Thank you, everybody. Go in peace. Have a nice good Friday, and we'll celebrate together Easter Sunday.